And we're live streaming from Founders Park in historic Ocean Grove, New Jersey. We are Music Matters with Jason Tram. Thank you for joining us for our unique podcast community. Here on Music Matters, we explore the triumphs and challenges of the musical world as seen through the eyes of distinguished artists. I'm Jason Tram, and I've been in the classical music industry for over 25 years as a conductor, music director, university professor, and most recently the host of Music Matters with Jason Tram. Here on Music Matters, we take you behind the curtain in a variety of musical genres to reveal artistic innovations and self-discoveries made during challenging times, as we've all faced in this year. You can see us on YouTube, Facebook Live, and LinkedIn Live, and you can hear us on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Please subscribe, follow us, and share and like our videos, and um, be sure to check out our past 175 episodes by visiting our website at www.jasontram.net. That's www.jasontram.net. And today we have a wonderful guest. We have a, a singer-songwriter, Marshall Potts, who is the leader of the Marshall Potts Band from Kamloops, British Columbia, where he lives on a 160-acre ranch, and um, including what the Dalai Lama would have called the center of the universe. And uh, we're at a challenging time today. He's going to tell us all about that. His crossover writing style has found acceptance in the Americana, country rock, and rock formats. Marshall not only writes inspiring music and lyrics, he mixes in ringing, interwoven guitar lines, and buoyant arena rock beats. His powerful yet tender insistent vocals share the experience of saving himself, deliver a universal message of positivity and optimism. His music is about moving beyond your past, taking back your power, and embracing the moment and living the here and now. Welcome, Marshall Potts. Thanks for having me, Jason. So tell us what's going on in Kamloops right now. Wow. It's been a whirlwind. Um, last Tuesday, last Monday at the ranch, I looked out the kitchen window and I saw a plume of smoke. And if anyone knows, well, you can look up and see all the photos I take. They're always from this one view. And it's looking west from the ranch through our valley. And I realized, oh, we got a wildfire. And so I jumped on the quad and I ran over to make sure. I had my girlfriend jumped on the phone and called the uh, 911 and and uh, started getting the planes out there and sure enough it was it's a big blaze big blaze happening we it was like being in a movie because then then we both jumped in the truck and we went down because we knew we had two neighbors that no one lives close by up there type thing but there was one about two kilometers and one about three kilometers so the blaze probably started so we went down their road and as we're driving down the road we, f we the windows are down and we hear the the uh the the roar of the fire and then suddenly we see the flames coming at us and i said get it in reverse we just threw it in reverse backed her up get off, off a little slip road and then one of the people that lived there just came up in their car and said are you okay she said yeah we're okay i'm the last person coming out and then she left and we left and then went oh. back to the ranch and then we just watched it unfold and i started doing some you know, updates on my website just so people knew what was going on. Well, thank God and, you're, uh, thank God you're safe huge. and I mean, thank God that, uh, that you're safe and your girlfriend is safe and that uh, first things first, you got to be, uh, got to be safe. What a, what a crazy yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy times. I mean, this the last two years for music for me has been pretty, pretty crazy like most people, but today just, or last week just made it even more crazy. <laughs> I won't say worse because I'm a positive person. And I know I mean, obviously your music is incredibly positive in your lyrics. And I really have enjoyed getting to learn your first album, which is on Spotify and all the major platforms. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about, um, did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, it, it seemed to be something that, uh, I think grade six, I knew it. And the girlfriend, my girlfriend who's with me now is my first love. And she was my first love in grade seven and then she broke my heart and ever since that moment i started writing songs so see that's how i know you can get a positive out of a negative right so i have lived it my whole life and i'm more aware of it now certainly as i'm older but back as i look back i can see how that experience actually led me on my path and gave me some of the best moments of my life I can say that as a classical conductor, a lot of the best music is born out of struggle and strife. It's just those universal human themes of heartbreak and tragedy and love and triumph. Those yeah. are what fuel us in all of music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's pain. 
like I say, pain and love, you know, and, and fear and love. There's two emotion. There's two top tier emotional places to be. Which one are you going to live like? Mm-hmm. Right. We can take our pain and turn it into something good. Or we can take our pain and turn it into more pain, which never works for anybody. Right? Yeah, it's not, and musicians tend to use and channel that and hopefully focus that to use that for a positive. And, um, you know, isn't it amazing that music's got the power to take that, what we feel, and transmit it to a lot of people. And then it kind of becomes something that it can actually heal people. Yeah, for sure. That's my whole saying is heal yourself, heal the world. Because really, what do we have control of? I'm sitting in, in what I would have said was idyllic 160 acres making music with my childhood sweetheart. And then a raging forest fire burned it all away, potentially. Hmm. Right? So you never know where you're going to be. And the test is when this stuff happens to you, how are you going to react? It's the only thing you have control over. It's the only thing I have control of is either go out, bang my head against the wall and freak out and yell at people when I buy uh, a loaf of bread because I'm all stressed. Or I can stay calm and look for the positive, even if it's not there yet. Well, we've all learned that across the world in COVID, especially musicians, because, uh, mm. you know, I, I, as, a cl- as a conductor and a musician myself and a teacher, it's like, what's essential? Like, you know, music was not essential, quote unquote, during this yeah. time, especially in New York and New Jersey, where I live and work. But um, but while that may be the case, like live music, everyone was on Spotify and um, you know LinkedIn and all those pro- you know, all those streaming platforms and watching music. Without those that entertainment, there would have been uh, you know I think far worse the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, music matters is exactly you know I I, I think I pinned it on my Twitter. We evolve through creativity. So without these types of outlets and music being one of the biggest ones, I think just because audio seems to be so important and frequency and vibration, but you know, art, dancing, anything creative, anything that, not sure if I lost you there, did I lose you? We lost you for a second. So give me that a statement again. It was really important. Uh, well, I'm not sure where we left off, but uh, I just think that uh, passion, like when your heart is activated, but that that's where you you can help heal the world through your process, right? And when when we go through strife and struggle, it's like it's like our hearts close up, and the and the the key is to keep it open because a broken heart lets a lot more light in. You know, a broken heart lets a lot more love out. Wow. So. And that's, that's, I think, love is the ultimate power, like John Lennon said, of creation, okay? So everything expands, everything good is all listed under the love name or frequency or whatever you want to call it. And anything else kind of resides under fear, and under fear is hate and war and pain and suffering and blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, we've we got this duality and we have a choice, like, which one are we going to work with all the time? And I think creativity and music... And all those types of things always come from a place of love. And even though it often starts from a place of pain, it's weird. It's a paradox. Did you start singing or playing guitar? What was your first instrument? And what was your first love when you started to make music? Uh, It was, well, guitar. My dad played guitar. There was acoustic guitar. My older brother had acoustic guitar. Um, They never taught me, but dad used to sing us to sleep at night. Sometimes at the end of bed, he'd sing some songs. So that was an influence. Um, and then and then my brother, you know, the guitar would be kicked around. And, and my brother was learning how to play. He's five years older. And he he had these books, you know, where it shows you the fingers, where to put your hand, the chords. So I would just sneak the guitar and I would just, uh, you know, start learning how to play it. Because I was probably embarrassed. Didn't want to let it, anyone know I was trying. And it came pretty naturally. I picked it up pretty quick. And then I, I just started singing and playing guitar on my own whenever I could. And as a kid, I would imagine myself winning my girlfriend back on stage, singing a song. <laughs> so how did it happen? <laughs> how did I win her back? Yeah. Singing a song on there stage. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Through pain, we, we achieved triumph. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of came, came together. That's really special. So um, as a songwriter, 
How does how do you how do you develop as a songwriter? How do you find themes? Where do you find inspiration to write songs? You know what's weird is well, I feel like the songs are already written. Okay, so you know I think a lot of artists think this way. I'm tuning into a like a radio station. I hear the melody, and then the melody tells me what the next chord is, and then I get the emotion. Then the emotion has to follow. Then the emotions attached to the melody because it always is, and then I hear the lyrics, and then sometimes they're totally right there. Like there, there's a song actually um, that I have a video up for called "Hearts in the Sky." I didn't have to work on those lyrics; they just came, you just put them down. That was that was written in ten minutes, basically, in between me working on my ranch and building a bathroom in the middle of minus twenty, and I get so cold I'd come back in, warm my hands by the fire. And to do the next verse, lay it down, and then go back out, work a little bit more, and come back in. So I don't know. It comes. I think it comes from, from the ether or the other side. And I think because we see less than one percent of all things around us, it doesn't. It makes perfect sense that that's the case. And I say these songs aren't mine so much as they're they're meant to be heard. And that's why I'm, I'm, you know, at this stage in my life, I'm just going to release everything I've ever written. I don't care if anyone hears it or not, because there's got to be some reason why I had this. And I think it can help people because I know it helped me. So. Well, music has that ability, as you said, to heal and to move hearts. And, um, and I was looking at your Spotify account, and you get almost 8,000 monthly listeners and uh, your top song is over 35,000 views. So it's definitely helping people. Yeah, well, free and easy is the, I don't know, like, uh, it just, uh, it, it has the emotional connection. And I get back to working with John, like we were talking before we came on the air, that, um, you know, he is a classically trained pianist. He's someone who has worked with uh, a lot of great Canadian artists and a lot of big worldwide artists. Like he's played, he's either played with, recorded, mixed, engineered, or produced um, somebody that you'll know, you know, from Michael Buble to Bon Jovi to... Aerosmith, um, you know, so he brought this real cool rock side of it, but he has this classically trained thing that allows him to also hear chords. And it may be the same chords, but he can change them and create lifts and, and make some things work. So it's been the best thing to work with him. Um, I love I love how like the producer and the when you get in the studio elements, how that changes things. How like some different per point of view or a different perspective can take a song that you've already written. What's it like when you went into the studio with your first album? But the first album that was mostly done just me and uh, my friend at the time, who was an engineer and a guitar player. And um, that one, if you listen to it, it's before my great awakening for myself. Huh. And it, it's, uh, it ha it's full of a lot of bridges that have positive thoughts, because I always, always was that way. But I also had this really deep, long yearning for love or to be loved in a, in a way that I felt I wasn't being loved. And I felt like I was just loving everybody as much as I could and wasn't getting anything back. And, and so those themes are all throughout. That's why it's called long goodbyes. I mean, it was really about missing somebody and it was in the end. Now I look back and reflect, I can see it was about missing my 12 year old first love. And that a lot of my music kind of came from that, but that comes from a place of suffering, right? And we are not victims and that and that still not a victim album. It's just thinking a bit more. And it's important never to let yourself feel like a victim. But you do have the control. You do have that control. That's really, really such an important thing to say. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Do you find inspiration from the nature that you've surrounded yourself with pre forest fire? Is that is that something that, that inspires you in your music and shows up in your music? Oh yeah. I think so. You know what the best thing is that it just means like when you're up there, we have no cell service. We do have satellite internet, which is really bad. I haven't watched TV since 2013, 2014. So I'm not, you know, you're not tainted by a lot of the outside influences and you can just kind of relax and just get in touch with those quieter moments, which is where the inspiration comes from. So yeah, I, I think it makes a big difference. I mean, I can't wait to go back, even if it's all charred and smoked. But 
Well, one thing I've learned, I'm a huge nature documentary person, that, that forest fire is actually part of renewal of the ground. The nitrogen will go back in the ground. It'll make for a better forest as time goes on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's gonna, it's going to be healthier. The whole area will be healthier. I, I believe that, too. And I think that, okay, we don't have as much forest, but guess what? We're going to have meadows and flowers. It'll be different, but just as good. So tell me about your second album. I know you're working on your second album. It's getting ready to drop. You're in the process. Um, what's it, what, How is this one different for you? Well, this one is really telling the story of the spiritual journey. So now it's, and it's doing it hopefully in such a way that others can, can get something out of it as they reflect on their own spiritual journey. Because guess what? We're all going through it at the same time. And... And uh, even if you, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're all going to get to the same place. Sometimes we get there sooner. Some people get there later, but it doesn't matter. We don't sit in judgment. I say no judgment, no blame, no guilt, no shame. Those are too heavy for anyone to carry. And that applies to the self because we walk like, are we best friends with the voice in our head? No, because the loud voice in our head is putting us down all the time. It usually tells us we can't do it. That's not you're being selfish, whatever. Not good enough, rich enough, good looking enough, sure. Uh, rich enough. We don't matter, okay? We all matter. And it's very important that we get that message out and that people understand that, yeah, you're suffering. Yes, this is a hard place to be. No, this isn't the end. There's so much more. Don't give up. And it does get better. I mean, uh, COVID certainly has uh, has put an a incredible change in all of our lives. I'm sure before COVID, you were touring and traveling and doing what you love to do on stages. But uh, that's changed us all. We've had to kind of reimagine what cre being a creative artist means in this period. What does that mean for you? What does being a creative artist meant for you during the COVID period? You know, I think it just reminds you that it's not about those things. It's about creating. <laughs> and again, you know, we evolve, we evolve personally, and then hopefully we help others to stimulate their own thought processes that help them move beyond whatever it is that's hurting them. And I think, um, you know, that COVID actually probably created more music than it, than it got rid of, ironically. And in the end, as we all are starting to, you know, you're in the state, you're coming back, you guys are opening up, things are good. We just dropped the mask mandate here in, in B.C., I think it's going all over Canada that way. I think the UK is doing it by July people's faces. We're back to humanity. Because that was the other side of this, is that we seem to lose ourselves for a moment. Yeah, we, we, we've been just looking at people's masked faces, and it's very strange to have a conversation with someone when you can't see their context, you can't see their, yeah. you know, you can't see their reactions to things. It's been yeah. a very weird time. Second verse and free and easy. Uh, has a comment there and then you know the bridge says you know it was you and me when times got strange you know so it's it's for me it's timely although that song was not written the nucleus of it was written a while ago but the bridge was and oh it's totally even it's timey wimey like like uh time is non-linear so it, and we know that is a sort of a fact guys you know so in other words it doesn't go from a to b like this a b c d it can bounce all around. So w you may not think you're in the right place at the right time, but you always are. And you will get to where you need to go. Just stay focused, be true to yourself, and don't let the scars that, that hurt you and created the person you are today drag you down. Find a way to heal yourself from those things. And that I can talk about that all day long because that really is what the whole album's about. I love it. So what do you read when you're not doing music? What What is... What's, um, you, you very, you're very philosophical. I'm just curious, what, what, what uh, readings do you do? What, 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 um, what are you reading right now? I don't, I don't, I haven't done any reading in quite a while, but I do lots of meditating, and most of my, my, my philosophical thoughts come in that moment between sleep and awake, and then you get epiphanies, and, and then when you quiet your your mind and your, and you just sit in your soul space, or some people call it the seat of the soul. I say the seat of love, just the center of you, because you are the center of your little universe. And in that one little space, like the middle of a storm, which is what we're all in worldwide right now, a storm, we find that little quiet place, and that storm can go all around us, but we don't have to engage with it. We can just stay away from it. And I th think that that's where, well, that's where a lot of 
a lot of my epiphanies and my thoughts have come from to the point where I get up and I, and I used to write things down like I won't go into depths of that because it might be boring for listeners, but some really amazing kind of thoughts have come from just being like that. It's similar to writing songs. The messages come. It's the same with, uh, you know, Beethoven did the same thing. He had a, he had a, a, a sketchbook right next to his bed that he'd wake up and he'd write things down or he'd go to bed and he'd write things down because that's when it would come to him. He'd put, just jot notes down so when he woke up and he was actually working, he would incorporate that. And Picasso did the same thing. He would, uh, he had this crazy thing. He would have a bowl and he would put a spoon here mm-hmm. and um, when, the, when, the, when he'd fall asleep, he would drop the spoon and he'd wake up and then he would start painting. Wow. That's so you're not really- alone. <laughs> Well, right in that moment, because he's waking up right before he's not fully awake, and then those images or whatever's happening right there. That's very must, cool. Must be where those melted clocks came from, and I love them. The Dal- <laughs> Dal- Dal- Dali did some of that too, I believe, with the melted clocks. He was kind of this dreamscapes. Mm-hmm. What, what an art inspires you outside of music? Oh, we cool. just lost Marshall. There's Marshall. What art inspires you outside of music? Hey, we're just getting our connection uh-huh. back with Marshall. Um, what art inspires you outside of music, Marshall? Uh, well, that's a good question. No one's ever asked me that. Um, you know, music really, it's life. Li- life is art. And, and you know, you kind of draw all your stuff from that too, I guess, because it's all a subjective experience. But, you know, I may get this stuff through through the ether, don't own it, comes here, goes through my filter. If I haven't done a great job, it might be a little muddy. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. I just like beauty. I like the beauty of nature. I think everything I look around, I try to be really great all the time. That's kind of art to me. Um, just the art of, you know, not being driven by emo- my emotional state. So it's a real weird circle, right? You know, what we have here is we have, let's say this is the the pinnacle of where we want to be at the top of the circle. And what we have is, you know, let's say, okay, you're a sociopath, so you have control of your emotions or psychopath, and you're at the top pretty much immediately. If you're like a monk or somebody trying to go through the spiritual experience, you retain your empathy and all of all of that, but you also come to the, the top where you have more control of your emotional state, which then affects your, your reality. I say change the inside and watch your outside change. Mm-hmm. So if things aren't going well for you, and you find you're trapped and you feel like, why are these repeating patterns? Everybody's hurting me all the time. Go inside, find out where the first hurt occurred. Start working your way back up. Once we know the why, we dispel the magic that's on us or whatever thing is, right? Patterns and keep the positive ones and create more. I say during COVID, we've all become, all musicians have become philosophers because we have so much more time to think about these <laughs> things. But I think you were already a philosopher before. Uh, no, I think that's great. I, I Actually, there you go. Isn't that the, the journey, right? Because we're all doing this right now. Everybody's analyzing and going, wow, you know, there's more to life than what I thought. And I think that that's, uh, again, we see less than 1% of everything. You know, we see cats can see other things we can't see. You know, there's other things there so there's a spiritual world and then there's this world and it's the balance we need to figure out and find out that everybody hurts everybody's human we all are the same take away our skin we all are the same there's no difference there you know and we've got to realize that most of our problems are fear-based and most of our problems are just not well come still from fear and a lack of understanding other cultures not necessarily the color of the skin we have to learn to live together, and we are doing that. I know it feels like the world right now is saying, no, you're not, but I, I the people I talk to, you, others, I tell that it's all it's going to stop that from coming to fruition. It's, it's, it's where we're going. thought, and thank you for sharing that. So when did you come up with the idea to start your own band? And uh, tell us about your first, uh, the first iteration of your band and how, um, when did you start to start, formally start the Marshall Potts band? Okay. Um, well, first band, I was like 18. It was called The Cause. I always wanted to make a difference in the world. What was The Cause? Type yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Cause was, you know what, it was weird. Uh, back then, I look at some of the um, songs I was writing at 18, 19, 20. 
And I listened to the lyrics and I go, holy crap. And that's how I understood. That didn't come from an 18 year old, right? It came from some other place. So, and I used to sing a lot of themes about how disappointing it is, how we've treated our children. How, you know, these types of themes. Um, always, you know, I was actually quite, quite hurt. There was a song I, I did called Shaking My Faith, which didn't reflect my current life at all, but it reflected um, the suffering from World War II and the things that people went through during that time. So I don't know. It's weird. Um, Long Goodbyes was a little bit more internalized because, you know, I'd live in a more of a life, you know, I'd, I'd been divorced and I'd had things happen. And and then I I just was trying to do the right thing and, you know, raise my kids and do the right thing. And through that process, I had my awakening back in, I guess it was 2013 and started happening. I didn't release Long Goodbyes until 2017, but I could have released it around that time because it was done. Um, but I, I kind of found my passion again through just through the spiritual journey. I realized, okay, well, what is it that makes me feel good? Where do I feel most comfortable? Music. What is the easiest thing for me to do that I don't have to work hard at? Music. So when you start to look at those things, then you you know the universe is sort of sending you in a certain direction, and that's where I came back into saying, okay, I got to do this. And then once I had made my decision to live my own love and passion, then my first love and passion that broke my heart showed up. Wow. Change the inside, watch the outside change. So I actually went through the process of healing myself from that hurt because I knew it was a big one. But the universe said, hey, you did the work. Guess what? You get to have the love now. You know, like it's <laughs> – that's and then that's how the band started again, and that's where I – went with just my name at that time because I didn't have a bunch of full-time people. And I do love the idea of, you know, always enjoyed the idea of being like a U2 and everybody's just equal on them doing their thing. But I just didn't have that in my life. So I, I just went with my name. It's really hard for bands today. I mean, there's, there's, we've interviewed so many really fine indie bands on the show, and, and it's just very difficult to keep personnel. People's careers change, their lives change, their marriages change, everything, personal lives. So it's, um, it's constantly dealing with personnel changes. It's, um, it's interesting that people are finding that indie lifestyle. It's a real challenge. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I should also say that the guys that are with me now are all dedicated. They're all in. And, uh, you know, they all came up to the top and they were all moving in the same direction. So we, we do have our solid band. Um, but uh, it took a while to just get there. And that solidified, I guess, over COVID. You know, just, before, just prior to that, we went to Toronto. We were playing. And I think that's where we really gelled. And then, then COVID happened. And that terrible that it just hits the – everyone just hit their mm -hmm. stride. And then we, all these great things coming up, tours and concerts, and then just – Floor swept out from under you. So, uh, what was it like for you and all and the band when it when it all fell apart and everything was canceled? How did you all process that? And when did you get back to the studio and start doing work again? Um, well, we got back in. I guess it would have been the fall of officially the fall of 2020 when we went in and started uh, really getting the album finished. Well, we did a lot of pre-production before that. Um, you know, we just said, okay, well, let's do some, you know, just keep rehearsing. Let's keep, let's keep oiled because we've got to that stage. I hate to let it go because, you know, you don't rehearse for two weeks and you, you have to fight back to get back to your level type thing. Of course. And, um, yeah, you know how it is as a musician, but, um, yeah. So then we, that's where it started. And we, we met John at a Christmas party in, uh, Vancouver, at the studio that we ended up going to record at. And that's, that was a pivotal moment, you know, kind of connected and, and then we stayed in contact and made that work. That was, that was 20. Yeah. Just before 2020 that that happened. Yeah. What's the rock scene um, pre COVID? What was the rock scene like in Canada? Is there a, a great interest in your music? Have you seen that grow as your, as your listens have gone up and all your social media has been out there? Uh, yeah, I, th I see it growing, but it's growing really, you know, kind of like my spiritual journey. It took a long time. <laughs> Anything and what worth doing is going to take time, right? 
Yeah. It takes patience, you know, like anything worth doing is patience. It's a lesson in patience. And the only time you're guaranteed to fail is when you quit. So you know, keep that in mind, right? Just keep trying. You know, it makes you tick. It doesn't matter. Like I've said before, I would rather have a lot of people listen to the song because I don't like one-way conversations and I'm hoping to help. But if no one does, I'm still helping myself and I'm trying to just work through my own emotions and get this stuff out. And that's what I will do regardless of what happens with this. But I really appreciate that people actually listen to it. What's it like I mean, to have one of your songs get, a, you know, start to get the popularity and start to make the rounds? And uh, what, what, do you get messages from your fans? Yeah. Yeah, you see that a little bit more. So that's what I mean by organically growing too. Like you start to connect with people and you, you know, and you realize people are all, all just the same. And it's... It's hard because look, I've I've been around so many people. I see so many awesome artists. There are probably better singers on, you know, TikTok than anyone that we have who's famous currently famous. I mean, it has nothing to do. Fame has nothing to do with art, and um, art has nothing to do with being famous. And if that's your focus, then you do have to do some dig you got to do some digging because you're here for a bigger purpose than that. And if you have this, unless you know, you're if a you reality TV star, then it's all about fame. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I try not to predict the future. Whatever happens, happens. Obviously I can't because look, I just got the wrench got burnt down um, potentially here. I don't know if the buildings are gone officially yet or not. Um, we're going to try to get sneak in there today. Hey, don't tell anyone. We're going to try to sneak in there today. <laughs> this well, is hoping, I hope it passed you right by and kind of went a different direction and uh, yeah. that things are where they should be. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And a lot of people reached out, you know what, since that, I mean, we've had people from Japan and Germany come and say things. It's been great. Lots of love, you know, that we've received. You know, I had someone, you know, people are saying, well, can we help? Can we donate? And I'm like, no, no, we're fine. I said, but if you'd like to download the song from the website, that would be nice. You know, other than that, we don't want anything for free. This is just a thing that's happening. And I'm hoping that through this experience, I can get a bigger message out anyway. What do you want to tell your fans? Where's your music? Um, I know you're getting ready to release a second, your, your second album. What, yeah. uh, what's going to be different about this one? What should people look for in, in this one? The people who really enjoyed the first one and your piece, your singles so far. What should they look for in the second album? Uh, you know, this one, it just finally married the... I actually even did some vocal coaching on this one. That's how seriously I took it because of COVID. I had the time. And I just think that this one where the other one may have been a little more self-serving this isn't this is for you you listen to it this is your album listen to the songs you're gonna get something out of it and uh you know just stream them it doesn't i'm not asking you to buy it or anything just listen to it because i think it will help and uh, just apply it to your own personal experience because it's kind of like these epiphanies i put them all in these songs you know and, and they're ones that work for me, and I'm hoping that there's a percentage of people that will help help them get uh, get on with their life and then find their passion and find out that, you know, they're worth, worthy of love because I feel like that that's the biggest thing. We're born here, and we, we just don't get it. By the time we get to 18, we, we've we lost the, the understanding that we're worthy of being loved. I think on social media, while it can be a good thing, can also be really a challenge, especially for young people. Uh, I have four kids who are teenagers and uh, the 22. And um, yeah, it's such a challenge because it places such unrealistic expectations and it's so easy to compare yourself to everybody else on social media. Oh, sure. Yeah, I can't imagine actually what that feels like. I mean, can you imagine the pressure that people have because social media is such a such a one-sided uh, conversation and in how perfect someone's life looks when it's not true. And that's the other thing to remember. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you have the same problems. Everybody has the same issues. And until we deal with those little issues, and most of them come from childhood, um, you know, we're not going to get to where we want to get. So never feel like you're alone. We all go through this stuff. You know, look at me. You know, you, you know I think I got my stuff together. I'm trying to meditate. I'm trying to be self-sufficient, grow food in the middle of nowhere and all the rest of it. And then the universe shows up near the center of the universe and brings something so devastating through. So you can't hang your hat on assuming just your thoughts will change everything. But it's more about how your thoughts 
are controlled in the times of the change, you know? So we're all, we're all passengers on the same journey. And remember that we don't have control and that's okay, but we do have control of what's in here, what's in here and how we treat others as the, as we want to be treated ourselves, right? That that's that's all the control we have. So exercise it as much as you can. Keep being a vessel for that light and that love. That's a beautiful, such beautiful imagery, and um, so important for people today when there's so much negativity out there. Oh. There was a lot of fear with the COVID. Still, it's still there. I mean, we all still have that fear and that those yeah. challenges. And I think we need as much light and positivity as we can possibly get. We do, we do, and we need to see people smile again. You know, we need we need to realize that. We touch people. You can go buy a loaf of bread and some milk from a store and some someone will talk to you. That cashier will say something profound if you listen for it. And uh, and you might be the one saying the thing they need to hear. And always remember, every interaction that uh, we're exchanging, our hearts are talking, the mind is thinking, and uh, it's the heart that we find the hardest to listen to. And we've got to change that back. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Music Matters today. How can people find out more about your work? Well, just go to www.marshallpotts.com. All the links are there. I got some interviews. If I uh, get a copy of this one, I'll post it on there too. And uh, yeah, that's where you'll find everything that you need to know. Well, a, a great deep thinker and uh, music that that to match. And I think getting to know you a little bit, That's you know, I can really hear where the music comes from. It's so interesting and that's why i love doing this show is i get to to hear music i really enjoy and then i get to see who creates it and why that's very powerful yeah it's the big why that's what we're and looking it, for thank you for actually doing the interview today under all these challenges you know one thing i know about music is that uh, extreme times and circumstances bring out great music so i look forward to seeing what this period actually turns into down the road when this clears yeah, when I start to uh, transmute Pro- it into something. And all uploaded. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Marshall of the Marshall Potts Band. I look forward to being in touch as we go on. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on Music Matters with Jason Tramp. Please remember to join us on social media and to like and share our videos. It means a lot to us. Check out our website for all of our past 175 episodes at www.jasontram.net. Thank you so much, and remember, keep music alive.